I was very pleased to hear that our paper was selected as one of the papers to be highlighted in the context of the 10, uh, 10 years anniversary of developmental cell. The relation between actin and endocytosis had been a highly debated issue in cell biology. Genetic studies in yeast had demonstrated the key and general role of actin in the endocytic reaction. In contrast, the role of actin in at least some form of endocytosis in cells of higher eukaryotes had remained highly controversial. Our study helped bring together the fields of membrane deformation, membrane fission, and actin, and strongly suggested the general role of this partnership in endocytosis. Let me give you some context about the development of these studies. Few years earlier, we have found that endocytic protein that contain the so-called bar domain bind and tubulate membrane bilayers, both in self-free system and in living cells. Then these proteins are generally localized at endocytic sites and bind dynamin. We have proposed that they help coordinate changes in bilayer curvature that occur at endocytic buds with other changes that accompany or drive the endocytic reaction. Subsequently, a study by the McMahon lab reported the crystal structure of bar domains and provided a potential explanation for their propensity to bind curved bilayer surfaces. They form an entirely alpha helical antiparallel dimer with a curved banana-like shape. Collectively, this study generated a lot of interest in protein-based mechanism for the control of bilayer curvature. Enter at this point Toshiki Ito, a very talented postdoc in my lab. He was intrigued by a paper reporting that the protein ABP17, also a dynamic binding protein, shared with, with bar domain containing proteins the property to generate tubular invagination of the plasma membrane when overexpressed. Such property had been mapped to the N terminal region of ABP17. This region was known to contain an FCH domain followed by a predicted coil coil region. A similar tandem arrangement of an SCH domain and a coil coil region had been observed in several other proteins. Database searches, primary sequence analysis, and structural prediction convinced us that the FCH domain with a flanking coil coil region formed a single folded module that was reminiscent of the bar domain. We hypothesized a structural and functional similarity of this domain to classical bar domains, and we call this module the F-bar domain. Interestingly, we found that putative F-bar domains were present not only in proteins with a putative role in endocytosis, but also in proteins that were only known for their role in actin function. For example, the F-bar domain containing protein TOCA1, a close homologue of ABP17, had been identified by Mark Kirchner co-workers as the factor that critically synergized with CDC42 and NWASP in actinucleation. In work that included, beside Toshiki Ito, the important contributions of two other outstanding postdocs, Kai Erdman and Aurelien Roux, we carried out a series of functional studies of selected bar domain proteins, ABP17 in particular. We showed that the membrane tubulated properties of F-bar proteins in living cells are tightly dependent upon the status of the actin cytoskeleton. We further showed that the property of dynamine to mediate the fission of tubular membranes and thus to counteract tubular elongation by bar and F-bar proteins requires actin function. After the publication of the study, it has been very rewarding to see work by other labs and by our own lab confirming some of our hypotheses and prediction. Short, shortly after our paper appeared in Developmental Cell, some similar findings were reported in an independent study by the Takenawa lab. Crystal structures of a bar domains revealed a striking similarity to classical bar domain. F bar domains, however, were found to have a more shallow curvature, thus explaining why if bar domains coated tubules have a larger diameter of tubules coated by classical bar domain. In work led by my colleague and collaborator Vincent Unger and his outstanding student Adam Frost, the idea that F bar modules bind curved membrane bilayer via their concave phase was beautifully validated 
by the cryo-M structure of F-bar modules in the membrane-bound state. In physiological context, the propensity of bar superfamily protein to bind curved membranes by layer is exploited both to generate and to sense curvature. More importantly, F-bar proteins were shown to be present and to play important roles at endocytic sites, including endocytic clattering coated pits. Finally, genetic studies have strengthened evidence for an evolutionary conserved role of actin and of proteins of the bar superfamily in endocytosis. Five years after the publication of our study, it is great to see how the field spawned by this paper has grown and continues to thrive.